שלום לכם, אחים ואחיות יקרים, אנחנו ממשיכים את העימות שלנו. One of the great signs of the end times is that the people of Israel returns to its land. We mentioned uh, two, two days ago this sign of the wars of the world, world wars that there were. And afterwards, yesterday, we talked about other signs of famine and earthquakes and diseases and things like that. We saw also very briefly the increase of natural disasters and, in, and it continues and is getting stronger, happening more frequently, and we could broaden on that even more in the fires that were and floods and hurricanes and storms. And again and again, we read about these natural disasters that come to wake us up and each one of these things comes to remind us and to point then of the period of time we live in. Yes, those who don't want to believe in God, they'll always say there always were natural disasters and you know you can't convince them. But the truth is that the strength and the frequency of these things is increasing and then there are more series of other signs that all of it together simply points with no shadow of a doubt of the period of time that we live in is the end times. So today we're speaking about another sign, and that is the regathering of the people of Israel to its land, or the resurrection of the people of Israel to the land of Israel. And so then in Luke chapter 21, from verse 20 to 24, Luke 21, 20 to 24. But when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then recognize that her desolation is near. Then those who are in Judea must flee to the mountains, and those who are in the midst of the city must leave, and those who are in the country must not enter the city. This we read yesterday. Because these are the days of vengeance, so that all things which are written will be fulfilled. Woe to those who are pregnant, and to those who are nursing babies in those days, for there will be great distress on the land, and in the wrath on the people. And they will fall by the edge of the sword, and they will be led captive into all nations. And Jerusalem will be trampled underfoot by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. So as we mentioned that, mentioned that before, we read it already, but we go back to this place in order to shine light on this verse that Jerusalem will be trampled under the feet by the Gentiles until the times of Gentiles are over. It won't be forever. When Yeshua prophesies about the same destruction of the temple, it won't be forever, but rather it will have an end to it. And as we now continue on and read prof other prophecies about this subject, we see that this resurrection of the people of Israel is going to happen in the end times. So we need to find it now and open to Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 25. Deuteronomy 4, <coughs> verse 25 to 31. When you become the father of children and children's children and have remained long in the land and act corruptly and make an idol in the form of anything and do that which is evil in the sight of the Lord your God so as to provoke him to anger, I will call heaven and earth to witness against you today that you will surely perish quickly from the land where you are going over the Jordan to possess it. And you will not live long on it, but it will be utterly destroyed. The Lord will scatter you among the peoples. So God through Moses gives a summary of the history that has already happened. After we'll enter the land of Canaan and we'll worship idols, and in the end we will be sent out into exile. We'll continue to read from verse 27. The Lord will scatter you among the peoples, and you will be left few in number among the nations where the Lord drives you. There you will serve gods and the work of men's hands, wood and stone, which neither see, nor hear, nor eat, nor smell. But from there you will seek the Lord your God, and you will find him if you search for him with all your heart and all your soul. And then when you are in distress and all these things have come upon you, in the latter days you will return to the Lord your God and listen to his voice. 
For the Lord your God is a compassionate God, and He will not fail you, nor destroy you, nor forget the covenant with the fathers which He swore to them. So from the beginning, God says, Look, you will enter the land, you will worship idols, and then you will go to exile, but I will not forget the covenant and the promises and the oath that I made to Abraham and to Isaac and to Jacob. God is a God who is faithful. He chose us, and we have remained the chosen people. But because we've left Him, we've lost much of His protection, but not completely. If we would completely lose as a nation God's protection, we wouldn't have survived. We wouldn't exist until now. We would have been erased from the earth. The only reason that we are still existing as a people is because that God has kept us and preserved us and held on to us and not allowed us to be destroyed. It's something supernatural. This whole story of the resurrection of the nation of Israel, it's completely supernatural miracle. But that that we survived and we can, the, the Hebrew language rose to be being alive again. This is also a miracle. But in verse 30, he says again, In the latter days, you will return to the Lord your God and listen to His voice. So it's this process then of the resurrection of the nation of Israel, this restoration of the land of Israel to God. It would happen in the end times, in the latter days. So this process then of this restoration, there's more details that we have about it. There are lots of prophecies that speak about it. We will look just briefly through the prophet Ezekiel in chapter 37. Ezekiel 37, it's the vision of the valley of the dry bones. From verses 1 through 15, we have this vision that Ezekiel has, and in it we see the two clear stages. First, we've got the dry bones that symbolize the people of Israel, and those bones come together. They get muscles and skin, and that's the physical restoration of the people of Israel to the land of Israel. In the last hundred years, we've been restored to the land, and we've taken on skin and muscles and so on. We have a nation, we have a government, we have an army, and we have finances and everything else. But then also we have the second stage, where God says him to prophesy to the bones. And he says, Spirit, come and fill them, and let them be alive. That's the spiritual restoration of the land. So first the physical restoration, and then the spiritual restoration of the land of the people of Israel. Those are the two stages. And so these same stages we also find in Ezekiel chapter 36, the previous chapter, from verse 22 to 27. And here God says, I'll read from verse 24. For I will take you from the nations, gather you to you all the, from all the lands, and bring you into your own land. That's the physical re resurrection. And then afterwards, then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean. And I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. Moreover, I will give you a new heart and a new spirit in you, and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will pour my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you will be careful to observe my ordinances. And you will live in the land I gave to your forefathers, and so you will be my people, and I will be your God. So I read through verse 28. So that's the physical resurrection and the spiritual restoration. These two stages together. That we return back to our land and then also recognize our God and we walk purified with Him. And all these things we see, they have happened. Jerusalem in 1967 returned back to be under Israeli control. And also before that, in 1948, the nation of Israel was restored and the people of Israel have continued up until today to be regathered. So we have the physical resurrection, but the spiritual resurrection is yet future to happen. When the people of Israel will come to recognize really God, not through a religion of people have invented, with all kinds of tens of thousands of commandments that God didn't command, and all that burden that they put on people that God never commanded. God is going then to open for us the eyes and remove that blindness that we had in Isaiah chapter 6. And in Isaiah chapter 29, he speaks about this blindness will be removed from us and our dumb ears will be opened. And God then will open us for us the door and he will open our heart and he will give us, like it says here, a heart of flesh and that we will know him and recognize him. We're in that process. 
we're in the middle of that process. It's also important to mention in Ezekiel chapter 37, the vision of the dry bones, that in the rest of the vision, after the dry bones, he gives another prophecy that there will be no longer the two nations, not Israel and Judah anymore, will be one. But that also has been fulfilled in our days. We don't divide it anymore into two kingdoms. We have one state together, one government together. So as we saw in these prophecies, these things are intended for the last end times, in the end times. We also have one other place that I want to read briefly in the Hosea chapter 3, Hosea 3, verse 5. And here it says, Afterward, the sons of Israel will return and seek the Lord their God and David their king, and they will come trembling to the Lord and to his goodness in the last days. So again, these verses previously are talking about the time when the people of Israel rebelled against God, and they were treacherous against God, just like a wife who is, is adultery, commits adultery against her husband. But they will be without a temple and without a king, and without a prince. But then it says, after all that, then they will seek the Lord and King David their king. Yeshua is the son of David. He is from the line of David. The time will come when our spiritual eyes will be open. And then we will also finally recognize him as our Messiah that the Gentiles took and they invented for themselves. But he is one of ours. He belongs to us, the people of Israel. And again, all these things will happen in the end times, in the last days. So we're in that process, in that period of time. We are seeking God. Many people are seeking God today. And God is going to reveal himself to us. He's going to pour out his spirit on his people. And he's going to open our eyes. And so all this thing, as we saw, the emphasis is on the end times, the end years, and we're in the middle of all that period of, period of time. May the Lord bless you and give you a new day and take an encouragement from these verses and strength for this new day. Love you. Shalom.